I'm Edwin Petan. I'm coming from Natonyo village. I'm working as a tour guide. 1984, Mulanje Mountain was covered with lots of trees along the river bank. So the scenery was totally beautiful. Now, not like where it was before. Are you worried that the younger generation might not be able to see these trees here? Yeah, I do. We do worry this. If they destroyed all away, the young one, they might never see them. So I love the mountain to be conserving. So these are the facts. My name is Micah Burhart. I am not from Mozambique. I don't speak Portuguese. I was born in Minnesota. I own a poodle. His name is Ptarmigan. I'm a professional rock climber. I was never certified to dream up the story I'm about to tell you. As all climbers are wont to do, I fell in love with a mountain range. A scruffy one, vegetated, remote, hard to get to, potentially scary to climb. This chain of mountains, or insulbergs, stretches 900 miles across four countries in Southeast Africa, about as far away from my home as you can get. It encompasses places like Milanji, where Edwin works, and further to the east, the site of my particular love interest, Mount Namuli. Inselbergs are like islands, but on land. I think inselbergs are kind of like islands in the sky. There are rocky peaks going up to 10,000 feet. You have islands with uh, endemic species. You will find also endemic species, most likely on mountains, because the animals are isolated. It's uh, a lot of bracken covered grassy hillsides with trees in the stream valleys. And there are many microhabitats within the plateau, which could house all sorts of insects which we know nothing about. We can only conserve for what we know. So if we don't know, then there's not, no conservation. So the first part is finding what is there. This is one of those trips where there's climbing and there's science, and we're trying to figure out a way that they actually are a good combination. To me, Mount Namuli started as something to climb. What I discovered is that it mattered, not just to me, but to science, to the greater ecosystem, to the people of Mozambique, who are committed to making the country more prosperous, and most importantly, to the people who call it home. I realized I had a unique perspective as an outsider. I could bring all the pieces together, if this expedition doesn't work, the science, climbing, conservation, community building, none of it works. We have 23 days. There's a lot to do. There's a 2,000 foot cliff to be climbed and more insects and reptiles than I generally want to think about that need to be identified. But this mountain is more than rocks and critters. Namuli is the ancestral homeland of the Lomwe people. They speak a traditional language, not the Portuguese that dominates the rest of Mozambique. And to the Lomwe, Namuli is the place where humankind began. A local priest shared with me, to return to Namuli means to die, but is also a return to the cradle, where the umbilical cord of the world is found, and thus to be reborn. I care about this mountain, but to the people who live here, Namuli is their past, present, and future. Nothing happens without the Lomwe people. The people in, Nam uh, in Namuli, uh, they've been living for a quite a long, 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 long time. So what we actually see uh, is like the people, they, not, they don't live uh, in a, like a group or, or a village. They're scattered. And uh, the landscape there, they use uh, the land as to make their small field for agriculture. And also the, that area is very beautiful, very beautiful because uh, you see the green part of it. You know, the, the, the forest is there. I mean, the setup is so, is so wonderful in that, in that area. 
So uh, this is what we are going to, 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 to find out and to see, is there any pressure they make to the natural resource in the area? Are they damaged? How they damage? Why they damage this? So that we come out with the recommendations, we come out with uh, uh, some kind of training, uh, capacitating them in terms of uh, uh, trying to see the environment so that the future uh, generation will gain from it. What causes uh, uh, the burning, for example, of the, of the trees in the area? Why are they burning? Do they say, do they know what is the consequence of burning uh, of the forest? And then we are trying to see solutions of not burning the forest in so that everyone will know that the importance of having uh, the trees growing on that side. So this is basically what we are doing. We are going to do with, uh, with the community in Namolia. Our science team is staggeringly energetic. They are the people who I wish I learned science from when I was growing up. My name is Flavis Davis. I'm originally from Brazil, but currently I live in California studying ants. Ants are wonderful. They are diverse, diverse in, in shape, so you can find many different shapes in ants. I'm here with uh, two colleagues. My name is Kaswell Tinandava Munyai. So I was born in a rural area of Limpopo province. I am coming from South Africa. At Mount, Mount Namoli is that when we, we are there and we collect as much as ants as we can, get as much rare ants as possible, as well as uh, getting like, the representative of all, this, all the ants of the Mount Namoli. My name is Arit Farouk. Um, I'm an ethologist. I work for a public university in Mozambique because Namoli has been uh, so poorly documented. Uh, my first goal is to document what I can see, what I can find in this expedition. And my second goal is obviously to find something that nobody has ever found. It's about bringing scientists to Mount Namuli and letting them go wild and having access to any part of the mountain region that they want to sample, including that face. There is a big problem in science, especially in uh, inventory of uh, different animals in Africa. There is lack of uh, inventory done. There is a big need to know what is up here in this mountain area. Mike and Kate are recognizing the, uh, the west face to find a good place to open a via so they can uh, bring us up in the, in the granite face to look for ants. The Euclidean forest is uh, the last remaining rainforest on Mount Namuli, and it's kind of this hanging, beautiful rainforest that sits above the village of Rere. It's the only thing like that on Namuli, and it's being heavily logged right now and used for its wood by the people who live here. I study ants and did my PhD in entomology in Brazil. Now I am a postdoc at California Academy of Sciences and in San Francisco. Mainly, I like them because they are very important. You, uh, they are everywhere in the forest. Here you can find ants in the canopy, in the low vegetation foraging on the soil and inside the soil. And in, in these micro habitats, they have uh, ecological relationships, relationships with everything. 
uh, with plants, they cycle the nutrients of the soil. So if you want to understand what's going on in the forest, it's easier if you look at the ants instead of look at, at birds, for example. Ants, since they are they very, very short lifespan, uh, if something happens in an ecosystem, you can measure that uh, faster because the next generation will be here soon. Namuli is a, is a place uh, that's hard to get to. That means that uh, almost nobody came here to document biodiversity. And in Mozambique, there are no air pathologies. So no Mozambique air pathologist has ever been in this mount. In Mozambique, uh, people don't, don't care for biodiversity. They see animals as food sources. They see animals as uh, income. They see animals uh, as pests. They, 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 don't give the, uh, they, they don't give them the, the real value. Uh, Mozambique is doing little to protect areas like this for South Africa, the United States, for Switzerland, for England. And they, they, they come from all those countries uh, because they are worried about, about our country, about our biodiversity. And as Mozambicans, what are we doing? Not much. Uh, so this area without the trees will make the, the streams dry. If the streams get dry, the water will not get to the bottom, to the bottom of, the, of the mount where, 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 where people live. Uh, and this is like a cascade if, if effect. If, if the streams dry, all the animals surrounding the streams will also die. And, uh, and uh, some people, um, down in the mountain, they, they use these animals as, a, as, as food sources. So just by cutting the trees, they will lose the animals, they will lose the water to drink, they will lose all these advantages that people uh, take from, from nature. And uh, th th this is the real value of biodiversity. If you, if you, if, if you don't protect it, uh, people will destroy it, and then they will only feel the effects uh, later, and then when it's too late to save it. This impact that these people are, are making, uh, it's something that they need to do to survive. So before we start criticizing, we first have to understand uh, their needs. What we are trying to accomplish in this whole project is to come up with a, a general overview of what uh, 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 Namuli has in terms of uh, uh, biodiversity, in terms of uh, the use of natural resources, so that on the second phase we see what can be done in terms of uh, pulling up you know, the situation in, uh, right now at Namuli. As a climber, the scientist's obsessive focus feels so familiar. A quick walk in the foothills with Flavia can turn into hours of collecting. It's the same drive that keeps Kate and me glued to our binoculars, trying to unlock the puzzle of how to climb this massive rock face. Everyone believes in the importance of this place, but it's a matter of somehow getting people to agree on how to conserve an ecosystem that must support humans as well as plants and animals. We can't just wrap a fence around it. I don't have the answers, but I keep thinking. If we do a little more, if we push a little harder, if I can just harness all the knowledge and passion around me, maybe our work can at least open the door for the people who live here so they can find the solution. The day has arrived. We've scoped our line, trained the scientists as best we can. It is time to go up Mount Namuli. Kate and I will push the line up the wall and bring the scientists up behind us. You can't go down, you can only go up. Up, stand, blue up. Go ahead, Mike, on over. Yeah, the hope is today that we'll find some frogs and ants and snakes and who knows what else up in this pocket forest that's pretty high on Mount Namuli. Uh, 
here we are, really high, uh, trying to get this, uh, these cracks on the rock. You know, reptiles, they like to come in the morning to bask in the sun. And if you see a snake and you're like going after it, let me know so if I have to like, you know, if something happens, if you get bitten, I can try and help you. Uh, it's a shame that it's not sunny anymore, so they might not be basking, so they might be hiding already in the, in the cracks. But uh, I'm curious to see what we can find. You know, uh, for many people, not having uh, arms and legs is a disability. But uh, we cannot forget that uh, for snakes, snakes evolved from, from lizards. So it was actually an evolution to lose uh, arms and legs. Uh, they can fit everywhere. We're at the bottom we showed everybody what what was going to happen and then I said who wants to go first and Flavia held up both of her jumars like this and said me 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 she was ready to go so I think we have our ringer climber scientist already and uh, I think she's probably already at the top of the forest hopefully having found 17 different types of ants by now because she's had a head start on it what do you think the white stuff is you want to blow it into the tube or just yeah, blue. Wow. They're hard to catch ooh, without ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, and larvae here. The chimney like crack systems with all the sedge and moss, all of the pockets of habitat on the cliff face we worked so hard to get to. It was a trove for the scientists. Stop. Really good job, Bobby. I'm super proud of you. But that big find, the one we hope would put Namuli at the center of conservation, didn't happen. Then again, that's the thing about discoveries. They don't always happen where you expect them. I've never filmed a sandwich bag with such excitement. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to open the sandwich bag there, for you? <laughs> well, uh, it was our rest day and we decided uh, you know, it's good to clean out the kitchen, work out our food for the next couple of days. You know, we found some old leftover bits of food and uh, then all of a sudden we found this guy. Well, Kate found this guy. And I sort of thought it was a snake, like it's big enough to freak me out a little bit and say, ooh, ick! Um, but it doesn't really have scales like I think snakes do. And so then we thought it was a worm, but then it was so big that we decided to collect it for Harith. Uh, so this is a Sicilian. So uh, this is an order of amphibian uh, called Apuda. Apuda means no legs. This is an amphibian. This is the first record of a Sicilian in center Mozambique. Not family, not genus, not species, order. The irony isn't lost on us. We traveled halfway around the world, certain we'd find a breakthrough discovery high in a mountain, only to find it while cleaning up our cook tent and base camp. <laughs> our time here is up. What all of us are trying to create, from Geraldo to Flavia to Kate, is a simple thing made from a bizarre combination of ingredients. Science, adventure, conservation, and community building. It feels like a relief. We have found so much, but the Sicilian may be the tiny discovery that galvanizes the scientific community around Namuli. The work is far from done, but it's time to celebrate this small first step. Mountain Amuli is such a living, breathing organism that doesn't have a beginning and a middle and an end. And this project is just a glimpse of how we interact with this place. My hope in this project, according to what we see the forest is now, my hope is to continue conserving that area so that future generations, they'll be using that Mountain Amuli as an example. So my hope is to continuing, you know, uh, treating that area as it is like today. 
It can be easy to let where we come from or the roles we use to define ourselves dictate our actions. Like I said, I grew up in Minnesota. I'm a rock climber. At a quick glance, it's pretty obvious I have no business involving myself in the future of a place like Mount Namuli. And to the people living beneath this mountain, the ants and frogs and the strange little Sicilian, they pale in importance to the need for sustainable agriculture, for a road, for medical care. But when we look a little longer, we begin to see there are connections between all of these interests. I think of the words of the Lomwe people. Namuli is where the umbilical cord of the world is found, the place where humans and creatures alike are born. I think about Edwin on a mountain 100 miles to the west of us, tending to his home, to his community, to his seedlings. We are tethered to the mountains, all of us. The beauty, <laughs> chaos, and wonder of the past 23 days taught me this. We all have a stake when we're tethered to the same thing. Yeah, so yesterday we went rock climbing and it was awesome. It was awesome. I really enjoyed it. <laughs>